Review worksheet three. Morning review. All right, so <clears throat> number one, uh, given the region below enclosed by our function natural log of x minus three and the line x minus one fourth x and the x-axis. Um, sorry, I forgot to, uh, I rushed through this worksheet that I didn't put uh, what I was asking you to find, find the area. OK, so we have our enclosed region. OK. Uh, I think um, most of us would probably prefer uh, doing top minus bottom method, um, but what do we have to be careful about if we do top minus bottom? We need would this would not be about left and right. I'm sorry. Would would this problem not be left and right? Oh, uh, this can be left and right. Um, so I I uh, on my key I did it uh, going through uh, to both methods, but um, we can do top minus bottom or right minus left. But if we do top minus bottom, which I still think many students prefer, what do we have to adjust for? The two functions because they're different. Yeah, the top functions are different, right? So because of that, we would have to rely on two separate integrals. Right. We have one side being. Um, uh, one side being the natural log of X minus three, and then the other side is uh, turning into that linear graph, so. Mr. Yang. Yeah. So if we see this kind of problem on the test, the fastest way would be to do right minus left, right? I mean, I, I think it would take about the same time. I mean, here you got to do two separate integrals, but if you do right minus left, you got to convert the, the equations. Oh. All right. Right. Right minus left. We can't we can't use these as, as it stands. I'll maybe I'll, uh, I'll show both ways, but um, you can decide which way you want to do it. OK, so if we do top minus bottom, we definitely need to find all the order pairs, right? Well, we need to find the intersection. So in your calculator, um, you can find that intersection. Okay, zoom six. So looks like uh, ne uh, the negative 10 by 10 graph is only showing this portion of it. I need to uh, move over to the right so I can uh, go to window and I can stretch my X value out a little further. So what if I extended that X max um, uh, to 20? You know, we can just try different values until we see. OK, so it looks like we're right at the edge here. Maybe go a little further so that we can actually find that point, but I think we can do this by hand as well, but uh, it doesn't hurt just to be able to see it. So what if I go out to 30? OK, window. Uh, 
All right, so if I find the intersection here, second trace intersect. I'm choosing points on either side, uh, close uh, on both graphs on uh, close to the intersection, and then it's going to look for that intersection for us. 17.346. How would you do that on the TI-36? Yeah, th uh, TI-36, you would do... Um, num solve? Yep, num solve. I got a different answer, but I think I just did it wrong. OK, uh, we'll try it. Everybody OK with the graphing calculator? I wrote the uh, I put the Y valley down. Just in case we may need it. But. For top minus bottom, we won't, but for right minus left, if we want to try right minus left, we would need that y value. All right, so num solve. Second uh, sign. And then we'll type in natural log of x minus 3. And the other side will do 7 minus 1 fourth x. Enter. Um, yeah, we know that this is occurring in the first quadrant here, right? Yeah, natural log of x minus 3. And then you have um, 7 minus 1 fourth x. So we can just start at 1 or 2 or um, Actually, it's going to have to be further out than three. So we'll start at four or five and have it look for that value for us. Yeah, 17.346. Did that work for you guys? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely have to start at a point that is past. Um, you know, where the graph begins to exist, right? Natural log of x minus 3 um, starts right at 4. Yeah, if I set natural log of x minus 3 equal to 0, um, I will get 4. Uh, you can tell by uh, looking at the graph here, if you go to second trace, um, 0, Actually, I think um, yeah, second trace zero. We just want to look on um, these graphs here. So left end point, right end point. Okay, right at four, right. Yeah, we know natural log of one is zero, so whatever makes that zero um, is going to be the x-intercept. So we know this is right at four. And here you can do intersect as well. You can also just solve the equation here, set that equal to zero to find the x-intercept. So x is equal to 28. OK, so our, we're going to apply both formulas here. Both are integrals. We have two top minus bottom. The top here is natural log of x minus 3. The top here is 7 minus 1 fourth x. Okay. And then the bottoms are going to be 0. Right. So area. Integral from left bound to right bound in terms of x. So we go from 4 to 17.346. Top minus bottom, so natural log of x minus 3 minus 0 dx. So that takes care of the left region. The right region here, integral from 
17.346 to 28. Top minus bottom. Minus zero dx. Okay, enter those in the calculator. We'll get 24.864 plus 14.188. Unit squared. All right, any questions there for top minus bottom? Now, if we do right minus left, we only have to, um, we only need one integral because um, if I do horizontal rectangles, my left and right, my left endpoint of every rectangle is hitting the same curve. My right endpoint is hitting the same curve all the way through, so I have consistency there, but um, I need to adjust my equations, right? If we do top minus bottom, or sorry, if we do right minus left, every equation that we're using has to be in the form of x equals. We can't just rely on these functions. Uh, these are perfect for top minus bottom, but these are not quite set for right minus left. So if we want to do right minus left, um, we have to adjust our equations. So we have y is equal to natural log of x minus 3. If I want to solve for x, I have to find a way to get that natural log to, uh, to move. So the way we do that, we don't divide, right? But we involve base e. We know e and natural log have a way of canceling each other out. They're inverses of each other. So e to the y is equal to x minus 3 because e and natural log are going to undo each other. And then now that x is free to move, I can just add 3 to both sides. Oops, plus 3. OK, so that's one curve. Uh, the other one is y is equal to um, 7 minus 1 fourth x. Okay, to solve for x, we can subtract 7. Uh, I can multiply everything through by negative 4. That should allow me to get that x by itself. So I get uh, distribute through, I get negative 4y plus 28 is equal to x. Okay, if we want to do right minus left, all we need is one integral. The one on the right is the linear graph. The one on the left is the natural law converted to be in terms of E. Now we can do right minus left. So area, definite integral. Now, we don't go from left to right. We go from bottom to top because um, we're now seeking out y values, right? Our bounds for area, lowest to highest y value from y1 to y2. So zero to now, we found that y value before, which was 2.6634. Right minus left. Right end point is sitting on the line. Left end point is sitting on the curve. Parentheses. And we should get the same answer. Now, to find that y value um, on the 36 Pro, you can either do, go through NumSolve, um, go through that process again, and then you'll arrive at 2.6634. Another thing that you can do is 
just take your 17.346 and just plug it into either function. All right, that will get you the y value because if you have the x value on the graph, you can find the y value by just plugging in, right? So if I do um, if I do natural log of um, replace x with 17.346, I'm just looking for the y value. All right, 2.6634. All right, so you can either go through the original function or you can go through num solve again. That does your y value. So I don't know uh, whichever way you feel like is easier. Um, either split up into two integrals using top minus bottom or convert your equations and do right minus left and just do and just rely on one integral. All right, any questions with one? Um, on the test, will there be any uh, will there be any problems that um, the uh, intersection will have to will be out of the frame in the standard, like on the TI eighty four? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, if it if it's out of the frame. But the thing is, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a, a graph drawn for you. So if you if you realize it's out of frame, you can just adjust your window uh, to move and uh, move uh, to get it to. But but yeah, I'll have the graph drawn for you. It may not be, um, I may not have numbers on it, but it'll be drawn for you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's out of frame, yeah, just play with your windows um, and then just get that, uh, you know, move it to wherever it needs to be to to zoom out. All right, number two. We have natural log of x plus 6, we have y equals negative 3, we have x equals 5. It says find the volume. Rotate it. Uh, we see volume, we see rotation. We know that there's some sort of um, rotation going on. This is going to be a circle related. formula, either disk or washer method. Okay, but we need to know where this axis is. So y equals negative three, uh, you're shown at the bottom. So y equals negative four, that's going to be a little bit below, right? So based off of this, can we tell which method this is, disk or washer method? washer yeah completely off the grid right or completely off the shaded region um now if the axis was up against uh the shade uh flat surface of the shaded region if it was up here then that's be that'll be this method and then if vertical if it was over here it'll be um this method as well because there's no gaps everywhere else right if it was here axis was here that would still be washer method right even those touching there's still this gap here we got to subtract out and if it was here, even if it was touching at the edge here, there's still all this gap. This will be also a washer method. Yeah, but definitely a washer method here. All right, this is the true center of the object. This is going to end up flipping over to this side. And so we need to extend our both our radius uh, from the center out to the boundaries. All right, so we're going to draw big R and little r. Remember, there's the center here. We're never going to just connect these two points, right? This is not going to resemble the radius. We got to involve the center. Okay, so from the center to the outer boundary, we know that's big R. And then from the center to the closer boundary, that's little r. OK, nice thing about top minus bottom. Equations that's provided for you are ready to go. There's no need to make any adjustments. Uh, we already are sitting at y equals, so those are ready to go.
Uh, all right, so top minus bottom, the top of big radius is sitting on the natural log of X plus six. Minus the bottom, bottom of big radius is sitting on the dotted line here, which is at negative four. Parentheses, right? It's always helpful and important that we put a parentheses around the bottom function. Two neg negatives become positive here. Little radius, top minus bottom. Top is sitting at the negative three. Bottom is sitting at negative four. So negative three minus parentheses, negative four. Two negatives become positive. Four minus three is one. Okay, here's our formula we're using. So uh, we know big R and little r will uh, get inserted into our formula. X1, we do need to look for that intersection, right? But X2 is just going to be this vertical line, right? This vertical line is five, so we know what that um, that boundary is. So to find this, we can use our calculator, uh, um, do intersect or do num solve between natural log of x plus six and negative three. And I got negative 5.95. Hey, does anybody need to see this? Are you guys okay with num solve with intersection? When you're doing that, what do you put as the x? Five? Oh, um, I would uh, pick an x value. Uh, I don't think it matters. Well, you probably don't want to go too far to the left. I think if you, uh, I mean, you see the origin here, so why don't you start at zero? I think there's only one intersection. It should, it should um, find that one. So normally I like to start at zero. Uh, if I can visualize the graph connecting at another point, then I would choose a point that is closer to that intersection so that it finds this one and not another one. Mr. Yang? Yeah. So when I, uh, go to y equals. Do I not put in the negative three and just uh, find the ln x plus six on the graph? Because like when uh, I put in the negative three, it gave me a syntax error. Oh, uh, you put negative three in for x? No, no, no. Like on the calculator when I was finding Which one? the intersection. Do you have thirty six or eighty four? Eighty four. Oh yeah, it gave you an error. Let's see. Natural log of x plus six. And y equals negative three. Wait, what did you just click? I I click graph immediately. Oh, uh, I did zoom six. Oh, is that what we're supposed to do? I mean, it was just it was just sent to the graph. Oh, all right. So intersect first curve. Oops. Okay, first curve enter. Second curve enter. Yeah, I like to always do zoom six just so because I, I don't know, you know, the previous graph, I may be all the way over in a different region. Um, it just kind of centers my graph a bit. All right, so. Pi integral from negative 5.95 all the way over to five, right? This is our right end point here, x equals five.
big radius, make sure we square our big radius separately from little radius. End up being a pretty large number here, 320. units cube. Mr. Yang. Yes. My calculator is doing the same thing like he was saying. When I hit graph, it graphs the natural log of x plus 6, but then it just goes to syntax error. Hmm. Emma, I found out why. You probably put the minus, like where the plus and the times are. Just do the minus with the parentheses at the bottom when you put in minus three. Oh, uh, right, let's see. Are you putting minus three or negative three? Yeah, I put in minus, that's why. Yeah, it so was yeah, we got to use that negative uh, notation here. If we do minus, it'll give you, give us an error. Did, okay, that yeah, I was doing minus. Okay, yeah, now if it was a number in front, if it was like X minus three, then that's perfect. But if, the, if it's the first, if your first value is a negative, we have to, uh, we have to use that negative notation there. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, are we good with two? All right, or two A. OK, two B. Same shaded region, but now we're rotating around X equals five. All right, what does that uh, indicate to you just by looking at what we have so far? Disk method, right minus left. Yeah, disk method because it's up against a flat surface, but exactly right. Right minus left, anytime you see a horizontal radius, we got to take the time to adjust our equations because the equations that we have are not suitable or it's not ready yet uh, for us to put into the formula. Right, so every equation that we're working with, they all need to take on the form of x equals. This method, right minus left, right, x equals. So we'll work with this equation here. We have y is equal to the natural log of x plus 6. Get that x by itself. If we take involve e as the base, We can get the e and natural log to go away. Solve for x, x equals e to the y minus 6. Okay, so that's referring to the curve, right? So I'm going to just put an arrow indicating what that's referring to. OK, so now we can do right minus left. We have everything we need. We have our two equations that we can use to build our big R. Okay, right minus left, right end point is sitting at the 5. Minus, big parentheses. Left end point is sitting on the e to the y minus 6. Combine or distribute the negative through. And I get 11 minus e to the y. All right, so here's our formula that we're applying here. V equals pi integral y1 to y2 big R of y squared. So 
we have big radius, which is ready to go, but we need to figure out the bounds, right? So we need to identify the lowest y value to the highest y value. Okay, I think lowest is easy, right? What's the lowest y value? Negative three. Yeah, negative three. Okay. But the highest y value, we need to we need to put something in here. Now, it's you just think of it as well. It's on this curve, but it's right here when x equals five. So I just need to find the order pair on the curve at that point. So what if I just put five into the function, and that'll give me the y value? If I give me gives me the y value, then I have that order pair. Right. So if I do f of five. I get natural log of 6 plus 5, which is natural log of 11. And you can either enter in natural log of 11, or you can get that decimal approximation, 2.398. And that gives us the y value that we need at the highest point. Okay. Big radius squared, so we got to. Enter all this in the calculator. Units cubed. All right, good so far. All right, number three. Uh, we have square root of x plus six. G of x is e to the x plus one. Square root function is the one here. E to the x is the one that's uh, op opening up. Find the volume of the solid um, when this is revolved around x equals negative six. which is going to be all the way over here, vertical line. Mr. Yang. Yes. When you put um, that, the one we just did in the calculator, do you put e to the x? Yes, you have to use x. You, you, on paper, I'm looking for y, but in the calculator, it, the calculator only handles x. Don't try to push and you don't put any other variable. So did that work for you? I got a different answer, but I just got to keep trying to put it in right. But uh, I thought I did. Me too, okay. 472, I think. Oh yeah, you got a different value? Yeah. Okay, what about others of you? Can you guys confirm that? I got 472 as well. I got 472 okay. as well. All right, I must have messed up here. 2.398. Yeah, I don't know what I entered in. Yeah, so on my key, I messed up. I I thought this was, yeah, I was thinking of this as zero, but it's actually a negative three. Thanks. So, yeah, so my integral's right, but I just copied my key, which is wrong. Okay, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing that up. I, had this right, but then my key, I, 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 worked, I worked it out wrong.
OK, number three. Um, rotating around a vertical line here. What is this going to be? Disk or washer method? Washer. Yeah, there's all that gap, right? There's no flat surface here to line up against. So we got to extend this horizontally, right? So we're dealing, we're looking at um, horizontal radius. Mr. Yang, do you have to write out all the graph stuff to get full credit, or can you just do the math? What do you mean? Like, uh, like drawing the lines, like the AOR and all that stuff. Uh, like uh, any of that. Like, no, shape. you don't. You don't have to. I find it helpful. It just but, helps. Uh, okay. But you don't have to. No. All right. Cool. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Um. All right. Or can we use these equations? In this form? No, we have to convert them to the X. Equation. Yeah, yeah. So you see horizontal radius, washer method. We got to get our equation in the right form. Anytime you see any, anytime you see anything horizontal, you got to just uh, remember. Chances are we got to do some additional work with these problems. It's not going to be ready to go. All right, I want to solve for X. So I'm going to square both sides. E to the X plus one. I got to convert this one as well. Take the natural log of both. Oh, sorry, I got to subtract one from both sides, and then I can take the natural log. I'm going to isolate that e to the x by itself first. Now I'll take the natural log. Bring the x down in front because now I'm dealing with an exponent that can come down because natural log. X comes down, natural log of E is just one, so that goes away. Mr. Yang? Yes. Could you remind me of how the, we found out that the X minus six was outside of the graph, like past the graph? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess we, um, uh, we could have uh, used uh, intersection to find these points first. Um, I kind of skipped that step, but yeah, we would probably want, probably wouldn't need that intersection. The intersection here is going to end up being negative 4.98. And so we know negative you would six. put it in the calculator, graph it, and then. Yeah, it. yeah, I'm, I'm skipping some steps because of the limited time that I have right now. Right. Uh, for those on 36 Pro, uh, if you're trying to find that, uh, if you put this in and you found uh, both your X values, you can go back and you can go back and find your Y value by putting negative 4.98, negative 4.986 into either of the X's and, and you'll get the Y values. Okay. So practice that. You guys should be able to get that 1.007. And same thing here. Um, yeah, if you're using the 84 though, I think it's just... Um, It's convenient just to put down both your X and Y values when they give it to you. And you can decide which one you want to use. Do we set the X equals or Y equals equations to each other? Does it matter which one? Which one? Which graph? Which calculator are you using? Um, the 84 plus CE. Like yeah, I, I 84, I would just always put the original functions in because okay. it'll get you the Y values, X and the Y values. 
So there's no need if you have the 36, if you have the 84, you shouldn't have to set the adjusted equations equal to each other because you already have the original already gives you the Y value. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. OK, so. Um, we need to find big R and little r. So this right endpoint is sitting on the x equals natural log of y minus one. This graph here is the square root, which if we adjusted it, it's x equals y squared minus six. And then we do right minus left. So right endpoint. Minus parentheses. Left end point is sitting at the negative six. And little radius. Right minus left, right end point is sitting at the y squared minus six. Minus parentheses, left end point. Two negatives become positive, and then six and negative six goes away. I'm just left with y squared. Washer method for right minus left. Here's our formula. Lowest to highest y values, so I'm going to have to target these numbers. And in the calculator, can you guys confirm that? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Guys, I have a meeting to get to, but um, what I can do because the meeting, I don't, I don't have to speak the entire time. I can have this on mute and I can work the rest of the problems. I just won't be able to answer any questions. So if you guys want to hang out and just watch me work through the problems, I just can't have audio on because I have a meeting going on. So I may have to stop in the middle and participate and then come back to this. So, um, um, but uh, you can put in a chat box if you realize something is off that I'm doing and and then we can go from there. So yeah, but at least we got through. Uh, I'll go through the rest of this. Um, yeah, just intermittently. So if you hang out or if you watch the recording, I'm still recording. So all right, thanks, guys. Uh, but um, if you want to hang out, feel free. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in class. But I'll work through the rest of these problems. I just won't have the audio on. Thanks. Okay, thanks, guys.
What the heck do we do? <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> Bailey. Uh, um, do you think he he left or something? Yeah, I think he probably got busy. Yeah, he probably has a meeting. Um, what? are you, you know ready? <laughs> You what? I said, do you know the last one? Yeah. Okay, explain it. Okay, so since the the axis is touching one of the graphs, right? The the big loopy one, which is negative x squared plus four, that means it's disk method, right? Because disk, whenever something's touching, and it's gonna rotate around that, it's disk. That's wrong, but you tried. It's definitely washer method because it's not completely touching. Whatever you say, Bailey. It's washer method. What? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you do top minus bottom, right? Okay, sure. Yeah. So the top graph, which is negative x squared plus four, and then the bottom graph, half x plus two. You plug that in to the big R and little R, basically, right? Sure, sure. And then to find the points, you got to graph it and then do the thing where it's like trace it and whatever, right? And yeah. Because, because your slice is vertical up and down, which is perpendicular to your axes, then you're going to do X's. Up and down slice means left and right points. Wait, I do be confused. So when it says revolves around the line, or the line Y equals four, does that mean that it's Horizontal? That, 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 means, that means the entire shape is going to twist around um, the line of y equals 4, which is the line that's touching the negative x squared plus 4. Okay, so that means like the little air, uh, axis of revolution is going to be horizontal. Yeah. Oh. So then it'd be top to bottom. Okay, okay, okay. Do you understand why it's disk though? No, it's not disk. Okay. Gabe, can you speak? Is it disc or washer? Let's see what he says. If he is even here. Gabe. <laughs> let, me, let me see if he has a key. Gustavo, what do you think? <laughs> Gustavo doesn't think. <laughs> With everything. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me see if I'm right. I think it's definitely washer. I know I'm right. That's the thing. Hold on. I'm holding. Um, big R. If there's a big R and a little R, then yeah. all it's, it's, washer. it's washer. It's washer. It's washer. Oh, no. Anyway. And then, okay, if it's washer method, that means you're going to take the line that's at the top, and you, which yeah. is four, right? Yeah. Right, and then the big R is going to be the longer line, which goes all the way down to the half X. Yeah. Right, so it's big R minus little R. Forget top and bottom. That, that's what threw me off. So it's, the big R is going to be the half X plus two. So it's going to be four minus half X plus two. Four minus negative X squared plus plus two. Yep, I'm there with you, King. All right. I got it. I'm feeling screwed. But anyway, whatever. Dude, ima imagine if, if I was explaining that and I was saying this to someone that was disc and then they left and then they did disc. On the <laughs> I told you for a bit. Oh my okay. God. It's okay. I, I have Mr. Jones, so I have an excuse to not knowing. Okay. Well, have a good day and good luck, buddy. You too. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.
decide what to do with those accommodations that I've talked about.